Hi, my name is Christoph with Click, and today I would like to introduce a test scenario using the ClickSense scalability tools. And since it's a nice multi-node test of a large scale, up to 4,000 concurrent users, I would like to share this scenario with you. I first went to AWS, uh, but it could have been any other cloud provider, to install the virtual hardware. Started off with the central nodes. Uh, to be honest, 16 CPU and 46 gigabyte RAM is not even needed. So it could be half the size uh, because uh, I'm not going to use the engine a lot or at all on the central node. But the repository database and also the file share is on the central node. And then I installed two RIM nodes with some uh, massive CPU and RAM and both will run the engine. Then I prepared two apps and published them to the everyone stream. So the apps to give you numbers are uh, about 300 megabytes uh, on disk, about 1.5 gigabyte when expanded into memory. And they have eight tables. Uh, the largest table has about uh, uh, 30 million rows. So it's a mid-sized data set, not particularly very large. I have to set up a virtual proxy for the tests later. Um, that virtual proxy I called header and it's using header authentication. And I set this virtual proxy to do load balancing between the two engines. So it doesn't really matter on which public IP address I try to get the app open. That virtual proxy will in a round robin principle look for the best suited engine. Of course I had to set up uh, the site license uh, and I got for this test 10,000 uh, analyzer users and I also had to set up a license allocation rule so that all the users that automatically will be simulated will automatically also get a license allocated. And then I installed the scalability tools from the URL shown below. The next step was to create a realistic test scenario and run it. So it would be smart to have the scalability test on a fourth node, a dedicated test node if you wanted. Uh, but I don't want to over stress my budget here. So I used the RIM nodes itself also to run the test. And then I ended up with uh, this scenario so that the scalability tests were run against their own virtual proxy. Finally, I also installed Postman because I wanted to see and prove that uh, using the QPS API that I really have 2000 sessions open on the respective engine. Having said that, let me show you the setup. First of all, going to the central node. So here I'm on the central node where uh, I set up the license accordingly. Um, as I said, I got um, quite a large number of analyzer users. I, I set up a license allocation rule. So uh, after all the tests were run, we can see that uh, each new user who hasn't got the license yet will get one. So that ends up in a very large list of users. And those were automatically generated users from the test tools. So the next step was to set up that virtual proxy for the test called header. Uh, just briefly, this uh, defines uh, a key in the, uh, in the HTTP header uh, where the username is provided and it automatically assumes a static directory called testers. I was setting up load balancing to two of the nodes and also under associated proxies you have to link both nodes so once this is set up um, the virtual proxy is ready and i can continue with the test setup the click sense scalability tools have um, multiple parts to set up the connection settings and this is where now i'm going to connect it could be on RIM node 1 or RIM node 2. Any of these two IP addresses 
would be good. And here is the same header name as before um, that I'm using the virtual proxy called header. So when this works, you sh should see a success message here. It's going to open the app and uh, you will see a green uh, sign here that the connection is successful. But then you can proceed and this is actually now defining how often you're going to execute the test here at the bottom. I'm running it only once. Here is the setting for how many concurrent users I want to have. So in one app alone, I will have 2000 users ramping up one user every one second. Uh, so this means like actually 2000 seconds until I have the full load on the server. Uh, and that is about 33 minutes. So that ramp up delay should not be too small because for the instantiation of a new session, it creates a bottleneck on the repository. A lot of logging takes place, a new license needs to be issued, etc., etc. And now um, the last part here is the scenario itself. So each of these um, actions can be used, um, like applying a bookmark, like uh, duplicating a sheet and so on. So the ones I used were making selections and opening a new sheet. So I'll show you the app real quick. And uh, I have only two sheets. It's a very simple app. Uh, there is a table object. There is a selection here on top. So I make any random selection. So I'm literally clicking anywhere in this app, making a few selections. Then I'll go to the next sheet and make a contrary selection, something um, again different. And then um, I would go back to the first sheet and repeat and repeat and repeat. So now coming back to the test, how this is going to be uh, configured is in the following way. As a first action, I'm changing to the sheet number two. Um, the second action is a short delay. So I'm between this and the next, I'm waiting 120 seconds, plus minus two seconds. And then I'm making a random selection in the field or in the list box listed here. I'm making any two up to 10 selected values from this, uh, taken from a random, again, waiting two minutes, uh, changing to the other sheet, uh, again, waiting two minutes, uh, and coming back to uh, the list box. Now I will say why two minutes? Uh, of course you can set it to like only 10 seconds, but imagine what this means from a calculation power. I tried uh, with a much shorter delay, but uh, the CPU power was insufficient. And finally to, to copy paste this uh, about a uh, hundred times until as a very last action, the session is just kept alive. Um, there's a trick actually when you save this scenario on disk in, uh, the, in the subfolder scenario, you will get a JSON file, which you can simply edit. Literally what I did is I went in, um, scrolled down a bit where the scenario begins and there where it says, uh, uh wait, timer, change sheet. I copied this block, um, about 20, 30 times. Uh, and this is it. Um, it's just uh, a repeating of the same actions. And when you reopen this uh, scenario here, um, you will get all those actions copied. Okay, let me let me log in now to the uh, machine. Okay, um, that's uh, the rim node one, and also. Uh, let's connect to the rim node 2. You can see that I installed the same scalability tools also on the rim nodes as uh, explained earlier. Uh, what I'll do here to get really a clean restart, uh, you will see that uh, half of the memory, even a bit more, is still taken, although no user session is there. So the reason is that uh, there is still cache from the selections held on the server. 
that will even sustain even when the user sessions are already discontinued. But I'll restart the engine service here and also on the other nodes. Same here. Um, I'll also restart the engine service here. So once this is uh, has happened, we will see that the memory is now freed up and I will start executing that same test now from the two machines. So let's start on this one. Uh, let's put this uh, update speed a bit higher so we can see instantaneously what's going on and also also on uh, the other rim node let's start the test as well so hit execute and same here we will watch the uh, reaction of the system and i will keep this running now uh, for a couple of minutes, pause the video and come back when we are uh, in about 30 minutes when the entire cluster is then serving 4000 user sessions. So we are now 20 minutes later and we have about 1500 plus sessions. You can see that uh, the server has quite some effort to do. It's uh, quite under stress and the same, pretty much the same picture is also on node one as it is on node two. But what does this mean in practice? So literally let's log in to the, se uh, to the server and see if we can get a session and uh, if it can work fine. So let me see in the browser how it feels to work with uh, one of those apps. And I'm picking, you know, um, the first app. The opening happens fast because uh, obviously it was already in memory. And if I make any selection, how quickly does the system respond to it? Oh, you see a little bit of lag uh, in the response time. But not too bad. And this is while the machine is pretty stressed from 2000 uh, concurrent users uh, who need some service from the engine, some answers. So I consider this is a good proof that uh, Click can deal with a large number of concurrent sessions. And also if I look on the uh, proxy service API, so that list of open sessions goes on and on and on. So it has currently about 1900 active user sessions. Um, the test is close to the finish. Yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to share with you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.